energy is all around us, which is important because human society requires energy. And so this uh, video will just kind of overview a number of the sources uh, which uh, we currently use for energy, giving some uh, advantages and uh, disadvantages. Uh, one of the challenges that our planet faces is as uh, our population globally increases and as the energy demand per capita uh, increases, uh, then we will need larger and larger sources of uh, energy. If you were to you know, compare, say, the uh, energy in kilocalories uh, that we think early humans uh, used, well, without uh, automobiles, without uh, the heating and air conditioning of homes without the transport of goods, you know, intercontinentally, uh, et cetera, their energy use per capita uh, was much uh, less. Um, but as, you know, societies modernize, uh, then obviously um, these energy demands have increased uh, drastically. And as numbers of uh, people in the human population increases, then once again, um, there will be uh, in, uh, increases. Uh, these, uh, this energy use is not evenly distributed throughout the world. And if you look, say, at the average person in the United States, they're using far more than the average person in, say, India, Nigeria, Mexico, uh, et cetera. Even uh, countries where standard of living is comparable uh, to that of the United States, uh, those of the United States are using far more energy than uh, others. Um, now, as we look at energy sources, uh, some have a greater impact on the planet in some of the environmental issues I've mentioned in other videos, as such as the increase in uh, heat trapping gases, uh, which is involved in uh, climate change. And so not only is there the issue of how can we obtain uh, energy for our uh, future, given that the population is increasing and energy needs are increasing. Um, but also, how can we do that in a safe way, which doesn't uh, cause lasting damage uh, to uh, the environment? Uh, one of the interesting uh, things is that uh, our energy use is changing. And so, as we look at uh, energy, uh, then uh, much of what uh, we would say uh, isn't uh, constant. And so there is a dynamic uh, flux in, uh, in energy. So for example, here you see an American city at night and you get an idea of just the incredible amount of energy which would be required uh, to maintain this. And if you look at uh, the energy consumption in the United States, uh, one can see that over time, there have been two trends. One, there has been a gradual uh, increase in uh, this energy usage. So in 1950, there was less energy being used than there is today. Um, note that uh, the increase uh, was occurring more sharply through the 70s and 80s, but because of conservation and use of new energy sources, uh, that the rate of increase has uh, been less, and so energy efficiency and conservation are certainly important pictures here. But now also notice that the um, uh, different percentages of total energy uh, use would then change. So notice that coal was a primary source of energy in uh, the 1950s. Um, but starting in uh, you know, uh, the early 2000s, natural gas gra uh, greatly began to increase, coal began to decrease to the point where renewable energy in the year um, uh, 2019 surpassed the use of coal for the first uh, time. Um, and so one of the key things here, you'll notice this blue band increasing, is that natural gas is composing a larger percentage of um, uh, the overall energy uh, uh, picture. Um, and this is uh, in part because uh, that there are fields of shale gas, uh, which have been able uh, to uh, uh, make use of hydraulic fracturing uh, and thus extract um, a large amount of fossil fuel uh, this way. Now I give a number of uh, different fields here and you'll notice while some have produced 
uh, energy at about the same rate. Uh, others have been increasing in uh, recent years and others have been increasing sharply. So once again, the energy picture is uh, changing. If one were to look at uh, the exports of natural gas, as you'll see, uh, they certainly uh, have uh, changed uh, over time, uh, greatly increasing, especially you'll notice the liquefied natural gas in uh, blue. Um, but in addition to there being great changes in uh, natural gas, uh, notice that this is an exciting time for renewable energy as well. The price of uh, wind power has greatly decreased. You can see that here. And then at the same time, um, once uh, wind power became affordable, uh, that its overall capacity greatly increased. Once again, uh, the renewable energy surpassed coal uh, in uh, their uh, contribution to U.S. Uh, consumption uh, for the first time very recently. Um, just as wind power uh, is greatly increasing its uh, capacity, uh, so is solar energy, once again, as its price has come down. So notice that until recently, solar power you know, has um, had a minimal uh, impact, but if you were to look at uh, recent uh, years, notice you know, the great increase in uh, solar uh, power. And another exciting uh, development is that it has just been recently that the amount of energy produced in the United States has surpassed the amount consumed. So in the um, uh, recent uh, uh, years, uh, the U.S. has gone from being a, um, a net consumer of energy to a net a producer of uh, energy. Um, there are changes in nuclear power uh, as uh, well as I will see, one of which being while there have been uh, permits for um, uh, new nuclear plants, um, some of them have been canceled uh, due to rising uh, uh, prices in producing those. And so uh, the nuclear power industry has a number of plants which are in planning or development, but a new nuclear plant has not been made in decades. That being said, 30% of the nuclear power produced in the world is still produced in the United States. Um, and so uh, just as a, before I go through each of these sources individually, um, energy sources are constantly in a state of flux. So for example, in 2020, the coronavirus caused a sharp decrease in the amount of energy used. And you can see that in say the exports of liquefied natural gas, you can see that in the price of petroleum per uh, gallon. Notice that from a high point in early uh, 2020, uh, that it decreased by more than half. And so uh, energy is certainly very important, um, but it is a dynamic uh, topic uh, to study. Uh, first, I'd like to consider fossil fuels. And fossil fuels are those which rely on carbon of animals which lived long ago. And so in the ancient oceans, there were marine organisms, many of which were microbial. There's lots of different types of algae, including things like diatoms and di dinoflagellates and groups that many people you know, aren't that familiar with. Um, when they die, uh, their carbon can be buried rather than being decomposed uh, completely. And then the same thing would be true of life on uh, land, that while living organisms can decompose completely, it is possible for um, carbon to be buried, especially, for example, in swamps, especially swamps which would occur near the equator. There would be the, uh, the possibility of luxuriant growth, uh, which would then and fall into this muck where it would not decompose um, uh, easily. And so uh, there would be carbon trapped there. And so while there is a carbon cycle uh, today, as covered earlier and covered in, in some of my videos, uh, where uh, carbon dioxide is taken out of the air, it goes into plant matter, uh, it can then become animal matter, and then after death, uh, it can decompose. Um, carbon can then also be trapped and buried underground. Now, we humans have figured out that if we dig up this carbon, whether it be coal 
or petroleum, which can then be refined into gasoline, kerosene, and other uh, forms of energy, that we can then burn that. Uh, we can burn it to make electricity. Uh, we can uh, you know, use it for gasoline, even shipping it across uh, the planet. The issue then becomes, unlike the carbon that had been in uh, the carbon uh, cycle, uh, where uh, it's constantly just going uh, from the air into living things and then back into the air again. We can take this buried carbon, all right, which has been underground for hundreds of millions of years, and now put that into the air. And as covered in other videos, the rising levels of heat trapping, carbon dioxide, and methane, uh, these are the main drivers of climate change, uh, which is threatening uh, so much of, uh, of the planet. But getting back then to um, uh, petroleum. Um, petroleum may not be as um, familiar a, a word as you know words like gasoline or then maybe even kerosene because uh, petroleum is this black ooze rich in carbon um, resulting from marine life uh, where marine life its carbon was buried and using uh, pressure and time and heat, uh, it was then converted into what we refer to as uh, petroleum. But it's a mix of uh, separate components. And so what refineries do is they heat this mix of lots of different components and force it then to rise a tower. But because there are different components, the different elements can then cool at different uh, rates. So very large molecules, for example, uh, would cool near the bottom, and then they could be siphoned off and become, say, asphalt. And then as the, um, uh, the uh, carbon uh, uh, molecules, so asphalt is made of very, very large um, uh, molecules, long chains of uh, hydrocarbons. And so going up a refinery power, it would then liquefy uh, first. Uh, whereas then lubricating oils would liquefy a little higher in the, um, in the tower. Heating oil and diesel fuel a little tire, higher than kerosene, gasoline, um, et cetera. And then at the very top, you could form actual uh, gases separating from the others. Now, these gases could be stored, um, but there aren't always you know, good, efficient ways of doing that. And so um, very often refinery towers, you'll notice that they are on fire uh, at, at the tip because the uh, methane and ethane, the gases which are produced in this process, are simply being burned off. Now, that is inefficient, that is wasteful. If there were better ways of storing uh, energy, then surely that would be done. Um, it is better than releasing it, however, because methane uh, is a far uh, greater uh, greenhouse uh, gas than is uh, carbon dioxide. Um, and so uh, while um, burning it isn't uh, ideal, uh, releasing it uh, would be uh, worse. Now, uh, of the many issues uh, that uh, affect uh, petroleum, uh, one would certainly be a uh, supply. Um, it was once thought that the petroleum supplies would last uh, forever. And you know, many of those who lived early in the 1900s just wit uh, witnessed uh, production of oil throughout the world and in the United States just rise and rise and rise. Um, but then it reached the point where there was a year where uh, the peak oil production had been reached and the United States began a slow decrease from there. So that was a great surprise to those who had you know, lived in the early 1900s, it was thought that petroleum uh, production would last uh, uh, forever. Um, but then as, as you can see here, we hit the maximum of oil production in the United States. Uh, and then since then, um, the domestic production of uh, petroleum uh, has uh, dropped. Um, uh, because the United States depends on petroleum, uh, the amount that is imported then had to increase. So this greatly affected the United States economy because it was less and less uh, uh, reliant on itself and then more and more reliant on petroleum from uh, other countries. And you can see how greatly you know, the uh, petroleum uh, imports from other 
uh, countries uh, then occurred. Now, another pr uh, problem is just as the United States hit this peak where um, uh, it had its maximum amount of uh, petroleum, after which point the amount of petroleum produced uh, decreased, uh, then the same uh, is feared for global oil production. All right, and so global oil production you know, has gone up and gone up and gone up. Um, but then uh, will we reach a point where the easy petroleum has uh, been gotten and uh, you know, uh, the, uh, it's just too expensive uh, to get any of the uh, remaining? And then the world has hit peak oil at which point oil production will then begin to decrease just as it did in uh, the United States. Now, estimating this is difficult because there are always new discoveries, which I'll get to, um, but then also um, as uh, oil production decreases, the price of petroleum would increase. And as petroleum gets more expensive, then uh, recovering, say, petroleum from old wells or digging in new sites, um, which may not be economically feasible at this point, may become uh, more so uh, if the, um, uh, the uh, prices increase. Now, one could argue, oh, yes, you know, we're certainly using a large amount of the petroleum uh, which has currently been discovered, um, but aren't there new discoveries which are constantly happening? So as you can see, if one were to graph all of uh, the discoveries of oil, it varies from year to year. There are some years which are higher uh, than normal. 1965 uh, was uh, the greatest number of uh, oil uh, discoveries where 55 gigabarrels uh, were uh, discovered. Um, but then uh, you'll uh, notice uh, that uh, the number uh, keeps uh, decreasing. Uh, on this graph, each of these horizontal lines represents 10 gigabarrels per year. All right, but look, in recent years, uh, the number of new discoveries is far less than it was. And so petroleum uh, supply is certainly uh, an issue. In the United States, uh, in the, uh, the United States has passed its year of peak oil, and it's possible that the world is around the time of its uh, peak oil, uh, also, uh, you know, perhaps having passed it. We won't know that until the future when we, we, we see the, the uh, production of, uh, of petroleum. Now, uh, while there are imports, then there are lots of consequences to this that get us a little out of the environmental end. Uh, so I'm old enough to remember the gas lines of the 1970s uh, where gas was rationed and the people would wait in line for hours sometimes to get uh, gas and you had to limit your travel because you just didn't have enough gas. Um, I have, you know, people telling stories where like everyone in a community would all get gas, but then they would, you know, go to a parking lot and siphon it from one tank into another of, you know, whoever needed, had the longest commute, uh, et cetera. And then there were signs, you know, outside some gas stations at certain points, like we're out of gas. Uh, that's not in the uh, most uh, younger uh, people's experience. Um, but as uh, petroleum uh, discoveries go down and as demand goes up, you know, the, uh, the fact that there may some uh, day uh, be uh, too little uh, supply, that's certainly an issue, not just for energy, um, but so many other things come from petroleum, like plastics, like asphalt, uh, et cetera. So this uh, has a, uh, a great uh, impact. And as you can see here, um, uh, demand for uh, petroleum uh, continues uh, to uh, rise. And so um, if you were to you know, compare different parts of uh, the world and look at how much petroleum they are using, um, it continues to go up. Once again, in part because population is increasing, um, but then also um, because you know more uh, greater percentage of the population has cars uh, than uh, once did, uh, et cetera. And so the fact that oil production is decreasing at a time that global oil uh, use is increasing, you know, there is then the, um, the potential risk that uh, there will be shortages in the future. Uh, once again, the amount of petroleum used in the United States is not typical. 
We represent four to five percent of the world's population. But as you can see, we're using 20 percent of uh, the amount of petroleum in the world, far more than our uh, per capita, um, uh, our uh, per capita, uh, you know, do. Um, now, in addition to petroleum, there are other uh, fossil fuels, uh, such as natural gas. So marine carbon uh, can form natural gas if it's heated to a greater um, uh, degree. Now, in recent years, the process of hydraulic fracturing has meant that uh, new reserves of natural gas are available, uh, increasing its uh, uh, production. Um, and so there are a number of uh, fields which were once the bottom of the ocean. And I know that this sounds odd, but if one were to study the fossil history of say North America, one would realize that for hundreds of millions of years, a lot of areas which, were now, which are now dry land were the bottom of the ocean. Uh, in the Cretaceous period, there was an inland sea uh, covering much of the Western uh, United States. And as a result, the marine life which lived here uh, left deposits. We can find their fossils, we can find the limestone of ancient coral reefs in the middle of North America, like Kansas here. Um, and so there are the remains of marine carbon um, distributed throughout regions of uh, the United States. And hydraulic fracturing is a process uh, through which uh, this uh, nat natural gas can be extracted more easily from these fields. So as you can see here, starting in the year 2010, there's been a sharp increase in the amount of uh, natural uh, gas which has uh, been uh, produced. And that has been a major factor in the decrease in the use of coal um, because natural gas uh, pollutes less than coal, as I'll get into, um, but also because it has lessened the uh, price of producing electricity, then coal has uh, become less and less of a viable uh, option. And as a result, there have been uh, large pipelines uh, which have uh, been produced so that uh, natural gas can be sent to Canada and Mexico, um, but then also uh, pipelines which allow the processing of uh, natural uh, gas to generate uh, electricity. And so uh, a very recent uh, phenomenon is uh, once again, the great uh, use uh, here. Uh, I have uh, videos which go in through the individual steps of uh, hydraulic uh, fracturing as I'll get into in uh, just uh, a second. Um, and the goal here in hydraulic fracturing is then to um, target a shale uh, which is deep beneath uh, the uh, surface. Uh, and hopefully it is deep so that any you know, water and, and chemicals here uh, are not going to contaminate uh, the resources for drinking water. Um, and so that uh, water under pressure with chemicals can be injected here to fracture uh, this uh, shale. And then the uh, natural gas uh, then uh, can be uh, pumped out and, um, and then utilized as an energy source. I'll get back to that in a uh, second. Uh, now, natural gas uh, pollutes less than coal, uh, not having you know, the, the production of sulfur, which contributes to uh, acid rain, uh, of uh, mercury, uh, et cetera. Um, and if one were concerned about climate change, uh, there is less carbon dioxide needed to produce the same amount of energy. And so if you were to compare the amount of um, coal that has to be, um, or, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, if you were to uh, then measure the amount of carbon dioxide produced for the same amount of energy. So, you know, this is uh, energy uh, for a million BTUs uh, coming from coal versus natural gas, propane, propane gasoline, notice that coal causes far more carbon dioxide to be released for the same amount of energy as than one would find in natural gas. 
uh, the production of natural gas has been a major factor in the production of energy in the United States surpassing energy consumption and the uh, country being a net energy uh, producer. And uh, as I had said, these are recent phenomena. So notice how the exports of natural gas, both through pipelines to Mexico and Canada, and then also liquefied natural gas, can, which can then be shipped throughout the world to any you know, country. Notice how they have increased over time. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, this is uh, susceptible to uh, new uh, scenarios. So in March, 2020, liquefied natural gas hit its uh, record uh, peak. But a couple months later, because of the effects of uh, coronavirus, um, it uh, was uh, less uh, than half uh, that. Um, before getting into other uh, energy sources, uh, once again, I did have um, a, a series of videos on the different steps of uh, hydraulic fracturing and the environmental um, effects of each one drawn from the first EPA comprehensive uh, study of, uh, of this. Uh, one of the you know, uh, things brought out in the study is uh, there are variations in how natural uh, gas can be produced. And so when speaking of the effects, one has to realize, so for example, if you're asking, well, the water which is used, how much water are we talking about? And the reality is there are big differences as one goes from one state to uh, another. Some states use far more water per, per well than uh, others. Um, and in areas which are arid, uh, this can be a significant draw on the community's water supply or if there are many wells. Um, but in other cases, not uh, so much that uh, the total usage uh, of water uh, for these wells compared to what's available for the rest of the um, uh, community uh, is not as uh, significant. And so, um, uh, then uh, chemicals are mixed with the water uh, before it is uh, injected. Um, one of the difficulties in talking about these chemicals is that it varies from state to state, from company to company. A company may say, this is our industry secret. We don't have to disclose what chemicals are uh, being uh, used. Uh, some of this may be in fear of, you know, if there is a leak, if it is known what chemicals we're using, this could be more uh, easily traced to our drilling operation and thus we could be held liable. Um, but some of uh, the uh, chemicals uh, that are used are more harmful than others, including some uh, which have very serious uh, health uh, effects. Uh, once again, if this never reaches drinking water and stays deep um, beneath the earth, that's one thing, um, but there are scenarios in which this could then contaminate uh, drinking uh, water. Uh, in later steps, then once the chemicals are mixed with this water, it is injected into uh, the uh, well. And in uh, an ideal situation, there is a large distance between the targeted rock formation and the resources for drinking uh, water so that uh, the risk of contamination would then uh, be uh, less. However, wells vary and sometimes this distance is uh, not um, as great as, uh, as it uh, should uh, be. Um, and so uh, there are uh, some potential uh, dangers such as in leaks in casings or tubes. Uh, since regulations vary, some sites may not use the cement which is required in others. There may be spaces in the cement, there may be cracks in the cement. And so while uh, these chemicals may not uh, uh, leak into the resources for drinking water in ideal scenarios, it is certainly possible uh, that uh, they do. Um, and uh, then uh, afterwards, uh, uh, you have water which has been withdrawn from uh, the uh, targeted uh, shale formation. It is called produced water. And then the question is then, uh, what is done with this uh, produced water? And that varies from being stored on site being recycled and used for more hydraulic fracturing 
or simply released in the environment where, you know, dumped on the side of the road or dumped onto roads, uh, which was more common in the, uh, you know, the early days of processing this, but which is still legal in some states last uh, that, um, uh, that uh, I uh, checked. Uh, and so it is difficult, you know, if one were to you know, talk about environmental uh, aspects of hydraulic fracturing, the practices can vary from one site to another, from one state uh, to uh, uh, another. And so there can be, you know, the effects at one site may be different from the effects at another site. Um, one of the things which it, it can be used to advocate for hydraulic fracturing uh, environmentally is that it releases less heat trapping gas than is um, found in, um, and then uh, is found uh, for say coal. Um, but uh, that, would, uh, that would vary um, from site to site. And there is some uh, discussion that uh, too much of the reporting is voluntary and that more methane is being uh, released than, uh, is, uh, than is being reported. And this would then change the calculation, the more methane uh, which is produced, uh, then uh, the worse the overall impacts of, um, uh, of natural gas use would be. As mentioned, just as marine life uh, can accumulate uh, carbon in the, um, and, and result in petroleum and natural gas, uh, the remains of swamp forests of the Carboniferous period and later times, but a large amount of it was produced in the Carboniferous, can then result in coal. And so these are shots from a, a coal mine in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, where this was once carbon from living things, such as tree trunks, tree trunks and swamp muck, uh, et cetera, uh, from the Carboniferous coal uh, forests, which were found near the, um, the equator during the time of uh, the Carboniferous uh, period. Um, and now, just as one can burn uh, tree trunks today and get energy from it, one can burn now these fossilized forms of ancient tree trunks and get energy uh, from that as well. The problem is in addition to the carbon dioxide, which would be released and uh, uh, result in uh, climate change, and that uh, the nitrogen and the sulfur here uh, could be released and form sulfuric and nitric acids, which would contribute uh, to acid rain. Um, petroleum can produce acid uh, and nitric acid uh, as well. And then also mercury can be here. So uh, the more coal that is burned, uh, then the worse the overall air quality can be. Now, there are variations because obviously um, there can be differences in uh, how coal is, uh, uh, is processed and there are different forms of coal. Some have more sulfur than others. Different plants uh, uh, have uh, smokestacks but scrub the coal uh, and uh, release uh, you know, less uh, sulfur, uh, et cetera. And so uh, this can vary from one site to another. Uh, wind power has, is ancient. I mean, there long have been sailboats and windmills. Um, but of recent uh, at times, the price of generating electricity through wind has decreased to the point where it is now competitive with uh, coal. Uh, I have been powering my house with wind energy uh, for a while. And I remember uh, that for a while it, it was expensive. It was noticeably more expensive uh, than um, the cheaper uh, ways of getting electricity through coal. Um, but now it's about uh, the same uh, uh, price and cheaper in uh, many areas, which is why renewable energy, including wind energy being the primary renewable energy, have surpassed coal for the first time as far as uh, being, uh, you know, meeting the needs of U.S. Uh, energy uh, consumption. This occurring for the first time in the year 2000 and 19. Um, and so uh, this is an exciting time for wind uh, energy uh, with you know, more and more turbine uh, being used. 
uh, uh, more and more turbines uh, being used, so the capacity will continue to increase. And there are, you know, so many positive impacts on the environment as well. Not only is near 2019 alone at 200 million metric tons of carbon dioxide was not used, um, also uh, that uh, 100 billion gallons of water uh, were not used. While this can be used to generate electricity, I have an electric car that can run on both gas and um, and electricity, and because of the amount that I'm able to uh, charge it, you know, I've been using far less gas. I get about 70 miles per gallon um, because uh, for much of you know my journeys, um, I am uh, running on uh, electricity, and so uh, there are many advantages to uh, wind power. Uh, they it pollutes less. It will contribute less to climate change. And also it's what's called renewable, unlike the fossil fuels, which will someday be exhausted. Um, the uh, uh, wind uh, is a renewable resource. And so uh, this is sustainable. It will not uh, run out and it will not continually degradate the environment. So this is a sustainable form of energy. There are other you know, renewable, sustainable forms of energy such as the use of hydropower uh, to uh, turn uh, turbines and to generate uh, electricity. Uh, there are you know, clearly advantages in that this is uh, renewable, that when there is a uh, rain, this will create more water, which can be used to uh, generate more electricity, uh, that it, is, um, it does not uh, produce uh, heat trapping gases or sulfur for acid rain, et cetera, so it pollutes the environment less. Uh, one of the, the disadvantages is uh, that uh, there are only so many rivers which can be dammed, and so uh, this will never be able to you know, contribute the majority of the country's uh, energy needs, uh, given you know, how much energy uh, the United States and other parts of the world uses. And then also there can be environmental uh, consequences because uh, natural rivers and waterways, when they're dammed, this uh, disrupts the ecosystem, prevents the migration of fish, etc. And so there can be downsides uh, in addition to, to hydro uh, power, not as great as fossil fuel use, but nevertheless. Um, solar power is also renewable in that uh, we will never run out of uh, sunlight which reaches our planet. And uh, solar power then also does not produce uh, heat trapping gases the way that fossil fuel use does, nor you know, mercury and sulfur and nitrogen, which contributes to mercury pollution and acid rain and uh, the like. Um, the price of solar panels and their efficiency has been uh, uh, dropping. And so the use of solar energy has been greatly increasing. And so once again, renewable energy with solar playing an important part surpassed the use of coal for the first time in 2019. And so solar energy will probably play a greater and greater role uh, with photovoltaic uh, panels in uh, the future. There are disadvantages uh, to solar. Some parts of you know, uh, the country may have you know, more cloudy days. Some homes do not face optimally. So if they were you know, constructed differently, they would face um, a site that would capture more uh, uh, sunlight. Um, and another uh, problem is if one were to say, install photovoltaics on your house, while over the life of the house, uh, it would get to the point where this saved money. There might be substantial upfront costs that you know the, a lot of money is due at the outset, and there will be savings uh, ultimately down the road. But that could then be a disadvantage to those who are say new home buyers who might not have that much money upfront, and that will be a reason that say you know government programs you know which you know could help provide loans for this would would be good. Um, nuclear power uh, contributes a um, about ten percent of the uh, global uh, electricity. And so it is a significant uh, you know, source of energy throughout the world. There are currently more than 400 nuclear power plants operating in uh, the world. Um, there are countries where three quarters of the energy 
uh, the electricity produced is uh, from nuclear power. There are countries where half of the energy, uh, the electricity produced is from uh, nuclear uh, power. And there are countries you know, where uh, a third is the case. Um, now, while the United States does not get a third of its electricity um, from uh, nuclear power, if you were to run through the different um, uh, countries with the amount of nuclear power that uh, they uh, generate, uh, the uh, United States is the world's uh, leader as far as nuclear uh, power overall production. So here's all of these countries, but I have not yet included the United States. Notice that France and China are substantially above all of these, all remaining countries are uh, less than that. Um, but then uh, if you were to uh, notice then the United States, I'm sorry, that was the dramatic end that just got skipped over. Um, uh, the United States, you would have to now change the graph. Is it far here? The United States produced 30% of the global total. So nuclear power is producing a United States. There are great advantages in nuclear power. It does not produce heat trapping gases like fossil fuel use does, um, but the risk of nuclear accidents certainly detracts some. Um, the prices can in, uh, increase. And so in the United States, there have been no new nuclear uh, power plants constructed for decades, although some per uh, permits were granted. Uh, recently, uh, they uh, have stopped production because of price uh, overruns. And then there's other complicating factors. So uh, as climate change continues to warm our uh, planet, um, there have been days in summer where nuclear power plants have had to shut down because the water which was going to cool the reactors just became too hot, all right, just you know, because of, of um, uh, of climate change or droughts dropped water levels. And so that, once again, you know, at our state of flux as far as energy um, uh, uh, concerns, and uh, nuclear power can re reduce the risk of climate change uh, to a degree that can, um, uh, can limit uh, nuclear power uh, during some, some areas. And so uh, while energy use can be studied from many you know, points of view, such as you know, economics, et cetera. Uh, from an environmental point, uh, point of view, some of the major points are that we continue to use more energy, uh, not only because of global population increasing, but also per capita, we continue to use more energy globally. That being said, there are, uh, you know, great strides being made towards more uh, efficient vehicles, uh, electric uh, vehicles, uh, more sustainable, you know, home construction, uh, et cetera, that use less energy. And that whether it be in the recent uh, improvements in the production of natural gas or wind power or solar power, uh, certainly the types of energy which are uh, uh, meeting this global demand uh, have continued uh, to change. 